Hi guys, so I've never really vlogged at all. I have uploaded a videos to YouTube, but none of me talking like this. So I guess I was just feeling inspired on my drive home and thought I would give it a try. So I guess I'm going to try and talk about an experience that I had last year in my track season. So, a little background, I do tennis, track, and basketball. And so, last year was the first year that I ever did high jump. And I fell in love with it. I was absolutely head over heels in love with it. That's all I wanted to do. And then about two weeks into the season, I got hurt. Uh, we we're doing this drill where they had hurdles lined up every five meters and the whole point was you know from a standstill you basically bunny hop over it and the hurdle before my coach told me if you can't do it if you don't think you can make it don't do it stand to the side of the hurdle well i'm a chauvinist i had to do it so i tried jumping over it and i felt too close and i got scared and i landed leaning back and my back essentially did this and everyone told me I was fine, you know, I finished up practice, and I went home, and it didn't feel quite right. And, you know, for the next couple days, it just didn't feel right. And everyone told me just, you know, just rest a couple days, it'll feel better. Well, I finally convinced my mom that I needed to go to the hospital and get an x-ray. And when I did, the doctor came out, and he told me that I had compressed two discs in my spine and messed up my alignment. Uh, I had compressed my discs like this, which made my spine alignment go like that. Not, obviously not quite as harsh, but they told me that it was certainly season ending. There was no way I would compete this season, and more than likely it was career ending. I would not be allowed to do sports anymore. I wouldn't physically be able to. And I just remember, you know, I just started bawling because that was the worst news that they could give me at that point in time. And I remember being nudged by this little boy's mom through the curtain on accident, and I, you know, I started eavesdropping in the midst of my tears to what's going on over there. And this little boy, the doctor told him, I'll never forget it, like, we're going to transfer you back to your regular doctor at the cancer center in Davis. And I was like, the poor boy in the bed next to me has cancer, and I'm the one crying. Like, if that isn't it. A reality check you know look at your priorities I don't know what is and then you know it kind of clicked everybody has their own worst case scenario and sports are how I cope with life they're they're how I deal with stress and family problems and problems with my friends I just go out there and I run and I run and I run and I run and so the doctor let me go and I decided that I wasn't going to quit track because it's something I loved and I wasn't just going to quit. And so I went to practice every day and it hurt so bad. Every time I sat up and I watched the team practice, I'd just start to cry. I'd sit up at the top of the bleachers and I would just cry. And I'd watch my team practice and I'd want to be down there. And then I realized I can still coach, I can still help my team. And so I did. I started coaching the hurdles, and I started coaching for high jump. And so I was down there, my coach is like, use your words, don't show them, and that's the hardest thing to do, because there's no other way to explain it most of the time. And so, you know, it still hurt, and I stopped sleeping. Well, I would sleep, I just wouldn't rest, really. And I had constant headaches, and I would forget things. I had really bad short-term memory loss. And my eyes wouldn't focus, my brain wouldn't focus, my words were slurred, my breathing was out of whack, I couldn't stand up straight, and everybody was worried, you know, that it was some tumor. But I went to the doctor and he prescribed me muscle relaxers, and I was supposed to take half a pill every night, but instead I didn't take any during the week because I knew that they would make me sleep, and I didn't want to oversleep and miss school. So I waited until Friday night, and I took two pills, and I slept all weekend. And this led to a very bad connection with that medicine, so I'm no longer allowed to take that. Uh, and my pill taking since then has been monitored, and I haven't had any problems since, but it was just a bad experience that went along with all of it. 
and you know about three months four months into my injury I talked to my coach and I told him I was done I was done sitting by and I was done watching and I wanted to get back and I wanted to practice and he told me no but he had had a similar injury when he was working in construction and he offered to help me do rehab work so every day for two months I went in 5:30 to 6:30 in the morning and I did rehab work you know I strengthened my core my back my obliques my everything and about a month and a half in, I asked him if I could start practicing again. And he said to go out there in the morning instead of weights and practice and see how it felt. So I went out there and I practiced hurdles and it, God, it felt great to be back out there. I remember the warm-up lap. I did two and as soon as I finished the first one, I just doubled over. I was like, oh my God, where have I been for the past few months? I can't do anything. And... I don't want to try to hide jump and that still hurt. He called me an idiot for doing it. And I remember going back in the morning, the following morning, you know, I was ecstatic. I can do it, I can do it, I can practice again. And our following me, I was registered to do the 100 meter hurdles, the 300 meter hurdles, and the high jump. And this meet was one or two before finals. And I ran before running the 100 hurdles, which was my first event, I was sitting over with the girls and I was, I kept feeling my heart because it was going crazy. I could just feel it and something didn't feel right and my breathing was wrong and I, it was shaking and I, you know, I told the girls, I was like, something was wrong and I got up to the line at the blocks and I was still shaking and something was wrong and I knew it and the, the starter came up to me and he asked if I was okay. And I said yes, and I just stood there and I was shaking, but I couldn't figure out why. And the gun went off, I started running, and about halfway through, I started crying and shaking, and I was having my first ever panic attack. And I crossed the finish line, and I couldn't stand, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't talk, and nobody could figure out what was wrong with me, and my coach's first reaction was, that's it, you're done, you're done, you're hurting your back, you're done. And it wasn't my back, and I don't know what it was. I was just so afraid and so nervous, which I've never been before. And this was such a new side of me that none of them had ever seen. And I sat next to my coach under the, the little tent for about an hour, trying to get myself to calm down. And I was crying, and I was shaking. And you know, he told me I was done. And they called final call, varsity girls high jump. And I got up and left. And I went over, and I got a PR and high jump. My first time ever, or my second time jumping competitively, I went up, and that was the best feeling ever. It really, really, really made up for that hurdle, and for the rest of that time, you know, I couldn't do hurdles. I couldn't bring myself to do it. And a week later, it was Mother's Day week, the week after Mother's Day, I or I guess a couple days before Mother's Day, I got an email from my cousin and she said that there was an emergency. And then Mother's Day, I got a phone call from her saying that this was the last time I was ever gonna see my aunts. And that was really shocking to me because I hadn't seen her in seven years because of a fight her and my mom had. And she used to be my best friend. And she was gone and I remember the weekend after she had to leave, there was a little, a little present outside my gate, and it was this little flower pot with a cake mix in it, with a note that said, "Even though your mommy and I got in a fight, that doesn't mean I don't love you any less." And I resented her. God, I resented her so much. And then when I got this this phone call, I dropped everything. And I went up and I spent all night up there and it, it pissed me off to no end because my mom wouldn't go up and see her own sister for the last time. And, you know, I went up there and I was with my cousin and my uncle overnight, you know, I, I had to talk to her for my mom, which is the hardest thing I've ever had to do, probably. Because the last time I saw my aunt, she was 
twig thin. She was beautiful. And I walked in that room and the woman I saw wasn't the aunt I knew. She looked strikingly like my mom. Ill, overweight. She looked like somebody on their deathbed and I wasn't ready for that. And I was sitting there and I remember running out of the room crying because I was watching my aunt. But it wasn't my aunt, it was my mom. And I was watching my mom laying there dying and I couldn't do anything about it. And then I had to leave because I had school. And two days later I got a, a text message during class saying that my aunt had died. And I didn't I didn't really know what to do. I was one of the last people to ever talk to her to make her heart rate spike. And it was scary and sad. That was the week of finals, and I missed all of it. Um, finals were on Friday, and I missed practice Monday through Thursday. And I went to finals, and I jumped the lowest I could ever jump. <laughs> I was the last place qualifier for our division championships, which were the following week. I only jumped four feet, and it was horrible. I, I don't even know what to say about it, but I was going to divisions, and that's something I honestly could never imagine after the, the season that I had, and with no practice, I went to divisions, and I jumped eight inches higher. I jumped four feet eight inches, which was a personal best for me. And it won me first at divisions, and I went to sections, and that was the most, I didn't do well at sections, but it was the most self-fulfilling thing that I've done in a long time, because even as horrible and hard as that season was, I didn't give up on myself every single time that I wanted to. Everyone told me, you know, if I was you, I would quit, you could go home, you could do this, you could do that, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to work and I wanted to get it and I wanted to prove to myself that I could be better than what they thought. I wanted to prove to myself that just because the odds are against you doesn't mean you can't do it. And I did and that was one of the best feelings that I've ever had. And I could have gone to sections this year again but I'm graduating. But I just wanted to, to vlog about this I guess and tell everybody my story because I think it's really important that people don't give up on themselves even when everybody's telling you just to give up because it would be so much easier and even when you say to yourself just give up because it's so much easier it might be easier but it's it's so much more rewarding to, to push through it and prove to yourself and everybody else that you can do it and you're forced to be reckoned with and if you really want something and you really set your mind to it you honestly can do anything so, so it's kind of long for a first vlog but i hope you guys enjoyed it comment if you if you want um maybe i'll post again sometime